I'm pretty proud of what the crew at Foos Design has built. You know, everybody worked tirelessly to get it here. And if you'd seen this car three days ago, you wouldn't have thought that it would have made it. But uh, I know we gave you a bit of a scare, but it's here. And uh, it's an honor to be able to show this to everybody. And I need to also thank everybody that helped us to get this here today. All right, let's thank take you. a look. The wheels are just unbelievable. See, they're they're not wire wheels; they're machine wheels. They're absolutely amazing. They look like wires, but is it one piece? Then? You don't want to make a wire wheel that look. I didn't want to make a billet wheel that looked just like a wire, so they're curved in several directions, and then they're tapered also from thick to thin. So how do you make that? Like, how do you manufacture those wheels? I did sketches of it, and then I did a, a full size drawing of the wheel with the tapered spokes and then we start trying to lay it out in the computer and where the wheels where the spokes cross is really important and originally the spokes I had drawn them straight but with a with a section this way off the face but I couldn't get them to cross where they crossed where I liked them so I had my curve in the computer and okay, that gets us the cross. <laughs> well thank you again. It's yeah, gorgeous. No, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Blown away. It's, it's an amazing, amazing job. What, what hit me first? What hit me first was the wheels. Wheels. Look at them. They're really gorgeous. The whole car just works. It's. Uh, I, I'm thrilled. Hey, Chip Foose here at the SEMA Show 2019. We're in the BSF booth with Glenn Woolsey's. E-Type Jaguar, and you know, there was a lot of challenges with this car, and number one, I want to thank Glenn for giving us the opportunity to build his dream car, and number two, I want to thank the entire crew at Foos Design, as well as all the vendors that helped us to get this car finished for Glenn. But there was a lot of challenges to building this car. The first challenge is, what do you do with a car that Enzo Ferrari said was the most beautiful car in the world? The E-Type Jaguar. The challenge was, how do you make the most beautiful car in the world even more beautiful? Well, you get, around, you get away from the production parts that were on the car and you try to make it look like what the designer's original intent would be. Now, if you've been following this build, you're finally seeing some paint on it and all the final little details. Now, I absolutely love this car and the redesign work on it was quite extensive even though it doesn't look like it because when we make modifications, I want them to look as if this is the way the car should have come from the factory. You start at the very front with the bumpers. We got rid of the giant Nerf bars that were in front of that and tightened them up, pulled them around the corner, made an all new grill that dropped that in, took a 120 Jaguar badge from the front, dropped that in above the nose, cut it out and made the scoop above. Now we got rid of the giant chrome molding that was around the headlight. This didn't have a covered headlight with the lens, but that is an original series one lens cover but we made all the detail all the chrome trim has been you know handmade for this car the lower scoop was also redesigned and sculpted to be soft like the rest of the car it looked like a dustpan on the stock version so we softened that up i think the louvers look much better being punched down rather than sticking up we also extended the back of the hood scoop this uh, raised section so it matches the same angle as the windshield of course, the windshield is a stock shaped windshield. We actually had the glass made, but we dropped it back, retrimmed everything, handmade the entire frame around that, and included the handmade mirror stems. And then Mike Curtis over at Curtis Speed made the mirrors. I designed them, he cut them. We handmade the moldings all the way around the back. When you get to the interior, the dash is a two piece dash. Top is leather wrapped, it's bolted to the painted bottom section. We used the original gauges in it, but we uh, went with a Series 1 steering wheel and continued that wrap around into the tops of the doors and the interior design actually uses the lower door handle with just a line around it and the tuck and roll louvers or uh, shall we say pleats they're all sewn together individually put into the door panel and the seats look like a series one seat but the series one seats 
weren't reclinable. They didn't have a, an adjustable backrest. So we actually added to the frame, made it look like a Series 1 seat, but these are the Series 3 seats that are adjustable. Basically from the back of the doors, the entire back section is handmade. Originally, this line would have been back here and the folding top would have dropped down. There are no glass and no side, or uh, no side glass and no top in this car. It's strictly a roadster. When we got it all together, the deck lid, of course, was really short and it made it look like a box section. It was actually out here a little bit. We tucked in the edges of the deck lid, extended it, so all handmade around the back. I also used a 120 Jaguar emblem, put it in the back, angled it so the letters are going straight forward with the, with the uh, center line of the car. The taillights are all handmade with the chrome trim. Again, the bumpers tucked in, rolled around. This is all hand created back here where the license plate drops in. All one off exhaust that's put in and the tips coming up follow the body, they roll up and then they're trimmed so that they actually have a curve to them this way as well as that way. Something else you almost miss when you're standing next to this car is the wheels, the rocker molding and the new rocker that's on the side. This car to me was so thin, it needed a little bit of more, it needed more body to it. So we added the rocker and dropped the rocker two inches. So everything underneath the car, when you normally would look at a Jaguar, you see the frame and the structure and the, and the underbelly, the unibody underneath it. We actually dropped that rocker so it covers all of that. And to disguise that line, we built a molding that goes the entire length of the car. So that rocker is a slip on piece there, bolted underneath. And when the molding goes on, it hides that that line there and the wheels you know Glenn wanted to do a wire wheel on the car originally I didn't want to do a wire wheel because I have a wheel company but we don't make wires so I made a billet wire and uh, I designed them gave the drawings to Mike Curtis he machined them and he did a fabulous job I think they're really a focal point on the car because from 50 feet away you assume they're wire wheels until you get up close with it Wow I'm really happy with that Mike you did a killer job and it makes the car thank you some of the other details that you may not see is when you get underneath the car, the rear suspension is narrowed six inches, the front suspension is narrowed four inches, and uh, when we get it back to the shop, we'll open the hood and show you all those final details once they're in the car. Because here at the show, we got it here, but underneath the hood, it's not finished.